Let's begin to process this panoramic image. One of my favorite tricks is to hold up my hand in front of the camera when I indicate that the panorama is ready to start. So you'll note here that we had some test shots early on. I was making changes to the camera settings, just making sure everything works. Then I flagged that I was ready to begin the panoramic photo. Now, since this was an HDR photo, I'll actually get rid of the next two exposures after that, and it looks like it starts clean here. So we can select these initial images, just hold down the shift key and scroll through, and I'm going to delete those because they're not actually part of the image. Now, if you're concerned about deletions, you can move these into another folder, but for purposes of today, I know that they're not needed, so I'll simply move those to the trash. Now, if I take a look, it's easy to see what's going on with the panorama. Because this is an HDR and I've used three shots, I'm going to actually adjust the width here so it's three images across. This makes it very easy to check what's going on. Now, I see that I do indeed have my overlap. Note, for example, the tree that appears here on the right edge of the frame has at least 25% overlap with the image down below. Before we go on to the HDR processing, let's select everything, right click, and send these over to Camera Raw. And we'll just scroll down to about the middle of the panoramic photo. We'll use this as a good base. Looking here, I want to make sure that the clouds are coming through well. Now on the base exposure, it looks pretty good for the clouds. On the underexposed image, they look even better. And on the overexposed image, the landscape looks great. Well, remember, the goal here is not to do a lot of raw recovery, but get the basic exposure right on the middle image. That looks pretty good there for the base. I'll do a little recovery of the highlights and pull down the shadows just a bit so it's not too strong. And then add a slight amount of clarity. And as I look at that image, I'm happy. I will take advantage of the Lens Corrections tab, though, and turn this on if needed. I'll enable Lens Correction, and you see it recognized that I had a Sigma lens attached, and it did a good job of removing some of the vignetting at the edges. And what I'll do now is select everything. With that selected, I could choose Synchronize, and I'm going to sync everything. When you're all set, click OK, and those changes will sync across the board. Now that the images are developed, it's a good idea to save them out. Across the bottom here, you'll see the workflow options. Clicking this, I could check what's happening. I'm going to save these to the color space that we need for the print, so I'll stick with Pro Photo RGB. We'll keep these as 16 bits per channel, and we'll leave the size as is, but this is a pretty big image. We'll apply no additional sharpening, but rather do that after the panoramic is merged. I'll click OK. And with all of the images selected, it's now time to choose Save Images. This allows you to store these into a new folder for intermediate processing. Let's make a new folder. And I'll call this HDR Source. Create it and select it. Look it over from top to bottom, and when you're ready, just click the Save button, and you'll note that the images are being written. Now that the developing of the RAW files is complete, let's go to Photomatix Pro. You'll find a complete Photomatix course available here on lynda.com. Inside of Photomatix now, we could just load a set of the bracketed photos, and I'll choose Browse. Navigate to the images that you built, and select three of them. You might find it easier if you make these into thumbnails so you can see those images. I'm going to go to an image set that's from more of the middle of the panorama, so I could better judge what's happening. Let's use this one here that has the sky, shadowy areas, and trees, and I'll load those. Look that the numbers are consecutive, and then click OK. Now this was taken from a tripod, so I feel pretty confident. And I don't expect to have any ghosts. Ghosts are caused by moving objects. Maybe you'll have some with the trees, but I think we're going to be okay. If you want to remove chromatic aberration from high contrast images, you could check this. But these are all options that are just ways to clean up the image. And we'll choose to reduce the noise on all of the source images and set that just a bit stronger. Sometimes HDR photos are prone to add up the noise across the images. 
All right, we'll click OK and see how that turns out. The noise reduction did a nice job. And let's work with the realistic category. Now, I'm looking for a nice balanced adjustment here. It was a very cloudy day, and I don't want to go too far. But note you have options for things like lighting effects. And when you release that, it'll update, and you can adjust the overall strength. And I'll just adjust the midtones so the trees come out a little bit better. And I'm going to take the overall color up a bit so it's a little more vivid. As we scroll down here, you'll see different choices. And you can adjust things like the white balance of the image until you feel like you've really gotten it. And what we did here was create an image that shows better details through the highlights and the shadows. I feel pretty good about that. But if tone mapping doesn't work for you, remember there are lots of different options. I'd stay away from Details Enhancer, but you might consider things like Exposure Fusion. And these are really useful if you're trying to just combine the different exposures together. Let's refine the overall brightness and bring up the saturation just a bit. That looks very natural to me, so I think I'll stick with that. What I'm going to do, though, is make my own preset. So you'll notice here that you can actually store this as a setting. What you want to do is click on the preset menu and choose Save Preset. This allows you to create your own preset. And I'll call this CR Landscape. And click Save. Now, we can go ahead and close this and close the intermediate image. We're going to take advantage of batching. So I'll choose to batch all of these photos. And you notice you can select presets. Now, if you don't see yours, it might not have appeared before, but it should be when you've re-exited and go to the batch window. It'll scan the presets again. If you don't find it, simply navigate to the location where you stored it. Now, you could choose to load the images. Select the source folder that you want to use and navigate to that. So here we go. There's all of my sources, so I'll select it. They are all in there. I'll tell it to make these 16-bit high-quality TIFFs and to store these in a new location. I'm going to process three images at a time because it was a three-image series. And I think that's pretty good. Note under More Processing Options, you can adjust things like Ghost Reduction if you think it's going to apply it, as well as pull down Chromatic Aberration and what you do noise reduction on. I'm going to make sure that that's set to all source images and pop that up just a little bit higher. I'll click OK to store it. Give it a look over once more. I've got my preset. I'm reducing noise. I'm merging three images at a time. Let's navigate out to our finder for a second. And we'll navigate to that folder and make a new folder called HDR Merged. Let's select that over here. Look it over one more time, and when you're ready, simply click the Run command. You'll now note that it is doing all the steps that you previously told it to for one set of images and applying it to all. This will take a bit of time, so we'll let this run, and then we'll come back to it. 